So I want to tell you today about some recent and unpublished work on the um, potential role of the lift stem cell factor in pancreatic cancer. So let me briefly remind you then that pancreatic cancer is a progressive disease through acquisition of a series of, of mutations, including activating mutations in KRAS, in activating mutations in, in P53, and there are characteristic morphological stages with various degrees of uh, morphogenetic changes through a series known as the PANINS, pancreatic cancer in situ. Ultimately, cells break free and begin to invade surrounding tissue uh, and ultimately can disseminate in through the vasculature to lead to metastasis. Now, you already heard from Jeff that solid tumors are not just tumor cells. There are an ecosystem, a community of cells of many types, including not only the tumor cells, but uh, blood vessels, endothelial cells, pericytes, uh, cells of the immune system. And important for this talk, uh, cancer-associated fibroblasts and a, a subtype of mesenchymal cell, um, the pancreatic stellate cells. Now, pancreatic cancer is characterized by its very dense stroma, in which nests of tumor cells are surrounded by, by um, extracellular matrix and mesenchymal cells, and particularly activated stellate cells that are responsible for secreting uh, the extracellular matrix. Now, stellate cells are a fairly recently described cell type in, in the pancreas, and in fact, in, in several other organs, uh, such as the liver. They comprise about 4% of all pancreatic um, cells in the normal pancreas. They are quiescent and they have this characteristic um, star-shaped, stellate shape. And in response to inflammation, such as pancreatitis or uh, tumor microenvironment signals, these cells are activated. They convert into a myofibroblast-like phenotype, proliferate, and begin to secrete um, large amounts of extracellular matrix and also a, a number of cytokines. So this project started as um, a collaboration between Ron Evans, myself, and Jeff Wall, who were members of the initial Stand Up to Cancer Pancreatic uh, Dream Team. And our goal was to characterize uh, the possible role of stellate cells in pancreatic cancer and see whether they might uh, offer a therapeutic opportunity. And so Yushi, a postdoc in my lab, decided to uh, ask what sort of paracrine signals might be uh, secreted from the stellate cells that could act on the tumor cells, and conversely, factors secreted by the tumor cells that could act uh, on the stellate cells to maintain them in an activated state. And the goal was to look for protein factors because uh, we realized that protein factors could, in principle, be targeted by neutralizing antibodies. So to do this, we decided to take a global approach and characterize the uh, secretome, the collection of 3D proteins for both the stellate cells and the tumor cells using uh, established cell lines, HPSC1 as a stellate cell line, and a couple of different human pancreatic cancer cell lines. And for this purpose, then, we collected conditioned medium, grown, uh, cells grown in serum-free medium for 24 to 48 hours, and then applied um, mass spec technology to identify all of the proteins uh, present in the conditioned medium. And in addition, we carried out a second type of mass spec analysis to identify signals that were generated when the conditioned medium of one cell type uh, was used to treat the other cell type for a few minutes, in this case 10 minutes, focusing particularly on tyrosine phosphorylation events that were activated. Now, the secretomes of these two cell types, and probably all cell types, are extremely complicated. In replicates, we could identify nearly 2,400 proteins secreted by the tumor cell line and around 1,400 proteins secreted by the stellate cells. 
And because we're, we were interested in paracrine interactions, we decided to look at the proteins uniquely secreted by each cell type, which would include around 400 tumor cell proteins and 170 uh, stellate cell proteins. And I should point out this was largely work done by Rijan Tian, a mass spectrometrist who was at that time a postdoc in the late Tony Porson's lab. So when you do this sort of thing, you get a long list of proteins, and we decided we would focus on growth factors and cytokines as possible paracrine factors. And we have uncovered a number of interesting uh, proteins. I'm going to focus particularly on the IL-6, IL-11, and LIF family of cytokines. But I will point out that as we expected, the stellate cells make a large number of extracellular matrix proteins and proteins that regulate the extracellular matrix. So when we use the condition medium of stellate cells to treat uh, these two tumor cell lines and carry out phosphotyrosine analysis, the major phosphotyrosine-containing peptide that we identified was the phosphotyrosine site in, in STAT3, tyrosine 705, which we know is stimulated by almost every cytokine um, that, that can be used to treat cells. And in fact, many groups have reported a role for IL-6 um, and phosphostat-3 in uh, pancreatic cancer cell growth in vitro and in vivo. So we were interested in what factor in the stellate cell condition medium was driving um, stat phosphorylation. And so to do this, Yushi set up a PANC1 tumor cell line stably expressing flag STAT3, stimulated the cells with condition medium, immunoprecipitated the flag, and asked what proteins associated with it using mass spec. And the primary receptor hit that came out was the lift receptor, its signaling sub subunit GP130, and the tyrosine kinase that transduces the cytokine receptor signal. So LIF, leukemia inhibitory factor, is a member of the IL-6 family of cytokines. And it's perhaps best known because it's an important self-renewal factor for many types of stem cell. This is why I'm speaking in this session, I guess. And um, for those of you who culture ES cells, you put recombinant LIF into the medium to maintain their pluripotency. So these uh, three members of the IL-6 family all have a unique um, cytokine binding subunit, and they use this common GP130 signaling subunit to transduce the um, cytokine binding signal. And in the case of the LIF receptor, uh, we know that it primarily activates JAK-STAT pathways. STAT is a latent transcription factor on phosphorylation. It goes into the nucleus where it can drive expression of cell renewal genes like SOX2 and OCT4 but also many other genes. And under some circumstances, it can also drive the PI3 kinase pathway and the ERK pathway. There's a little bit of history of the role for LIF in, in cancer. Um, can induce EMT and promote metastasis in, in some systems. And interestingly, Frank McCormick's lab has shown that LIF is highly induced by oncogenic KRAS mutants, suggesting that the tumor cells themselves may make uh, LIF. So the stellate cells appear to be a major source of leukemia inhibitory factor, although the tumor cells may also make LIF. But you can see that if we look at phosphostat-3 as a readout to LIF for LIF signaling, the stellate cell, these three stellate cell lines do not respond, whereas this PANC1 um, tumor cell clearly uh, shows strong activation of phosphostat-3. And most cell lines respond to lift stimulation. But as I said, some, some tumor cells, some pancreatic tumor cell lines do make lift, and you can see some ELISA um, assays here showing that, as it happens, Mia PACA2 and PAC1 make very low LIF, which is why we thought it was unique to the stellate cells. Um, the stellate cell level is here. Some of the tumor lines make almost as much as, as the stellate cells, and this may be driven by activated KRAS. 
So I suppose one question was, is um, lift the, the major factor in stellate cell condition medium? And for this purpose, we tested whether a neutralizing lift monoclonal antibody could damp down the STAT3 signal. And you can see that if we add this neutralizing antibody to the condition medium, most of the STAT3 signal goes away. Um, there's a small effect of treating with a neutralizing IL-6 antibody. We knew IL-6 was also secreted by these cells, and if you use both together, you, would, you totally abolish um, STAT3 phosphorylation. So these preliminary results led us to test whether LIF might play a role in pancreatic cancer in vivo. And for this purpose, we used the KPC model that David Huberson <coughs> developed in which a mutant activated KRAS is induced by PDX1 CRE, which is expressed in pancreatic um, epithelial cells. And uh, P53, flox alleles of P53 are excised, leading to a P53 null phenotype. And these mice develop very rapid and aggressive pancreatic cancer. They're probably born with it. Um, and they mostly die by around uh, 50 days after, after birth. So then what we planned to do was to use these mice and test the consequences of treating them with a neutralizing lift monoclonal antibody, um, D25. And just to show you, um, this, uh, this antibody works very well to neutralize human LIF, but unfortunately, it was, and it was raised against human LIF, unfortunately, it's not so effective against mouse LIF, which is perhaps not surprising, about fivefold less effective and so we needed a much higher dose of the antibody to neutralize um, the mouse lip. In the end, we settled on um, a dose in the mouse of 25 milligrams per kilogram. You can see here a section of mice treated with a normal control IgG where the brown stain in the nucleus of these tumor nests is phosphostat-3. Um, when we treat with the antibody, we can see significant numbers of tumor cells that are lacking the phosphostat-3 uh, signal. So we set up a sort of a clinical trial in these mice in which we administered both anti-LIF antibody or a control antibody, and also treated them with gemcitabine at 50 mg per kg, which is the standard of care for, um, for pancreatic cancer. Unfortunately, it's not very effective, but it's what is used. And so you can see the uh, protocol for administering um, these two reagents. And if we looked at survival of the mice, we can see that the mice, as I told you, die around 50 days. Uh, if, uh, if we include GEM, um, this, sorry, uh, GEM plus control IG die around 50 days, if we use the neutralizing anti-LIF antibody, we can see a significant extension in, in lifespan. This is a very difficult uh, model to treat because it's progressed so long. We asked what sort of phenotypic effect the antibodies had on, on the tumor, and um, three different pathologists scored these tumor sections blind, and you can see here the, um, the antibody-treated samples compared to the IgG-treated samples. And they came to the conclusion that um, the antibody is in inducing an increase in the area of the tumor that is well differentiated. Potentially, this is because the neutralization of LIF is preventing the self renewal of a stem cell like population and allowing the cells to differentiate. To test that idea, we collaborated with Tanisha's lab, and particularly Nikki Lytle in her lab carried out um, stem cell marker analysis on um, cells isolated from uh, tumors. And you can see for several uh, stem cell markers, there is a decrease in the level of um, the marker in the antibody-treated um, samples. We validated this by using a, a second genetic model in which 
We crossed in a floxed allele of the lift receptor into the KPC mouse, so now we could get genetic ablation of lift. Um, before I show you those data, I should point out that using RNA scope in situ hybridization analysis, we could show that the lift receptor, seen here in red, is or purple, is predominantly expressed in the tumor cells uh, compared to the stromal cells shown here in, in blue for periostin. In contrast, LIF is predominantly expressed in the stromal cells, shown again in purple here, uh, and particularly stromal cells surrounding the tumor cells, which is shown here um, in blue, keratin 19, although there are a few tumor cells that are, um, are positive, consistent with some of them making LIF. So in these mice, uh, with two flocks lift receptor alleles, so now we're knocking out lift receptor in all of the pancreatic epithelial cell uh, compartment, we can see again a significant increase in survival, and this seems to potentiate actually the response to gemcitabine where we get an even further extension of survival. So this is all in the mouse. The real question is, is this true in humans? And so we've done some preliminary analysis to test whether um, LIF is, is present in human pancreatic tumors and whether it might be a therapeutic target. So by ELISA analysis, um, using human uh, tumor samples from uh, Tim Donahue at UCLA, we can see that um, the levels of, of LIF are relatively low in the normal pancreas. There's a slight increase in, in the pancreas from um, uh, humans with pancreatitis, and there's a significant increase in the level of LIF in tumor samples themselves. And there's also an increase in the level of LIF uh, we can detect in the serum of these patients. And the levels of, of LIF are actually almost as high as the level, oh, sorry, LIF here are at least as high as the levels of CA199, which is a commonly used biomarker for um, treatment response. We've been able to validate these results by using a proteomic analysis, Rujun Tian, now in China has developed a way of monitoring protein levels using uh, parallel reaction monitoring mass spec on uh, glycopeptides that are isolated from tumor tissue, and you can see very high levels of LIF in, in human tumor samples. Interestingly, the levels of LIF receptor go down. Um, I think we think this is because most of the cells in this tumor are now st uh, stromal cells. And just one last point I'll make before closing is that we could not detect IL-6 receptor in um, these human uh, tumor samples, and that's relevant because a lot of people have proposed that it is IL-6 that's driving pancreatic cancer. And what we found is a rather striking result, which shows you have to work both on model systems as well as the real human tissue, is that while in the mouse, the tumors, tumor samples have high levels of LIF, uh, and high levels of IL-6. Um, in the human samples, there are high levels of LIF, but very low levels of IL-6. So we do not believe that IL-6 is playing a major role in um, human pancreatic cancer. Then one last point is that if one analyzes historical data, TCGA data, of all of the tissues, tumor tissues that were analyzed, pancreatic cancer has the highest level of LIF. And there's a correlation um, in terms of uh, prognosis. Uh, patients with high LIF RNA in, um, in their pancreat pancreatic tumor have, a, have a, a poorer survival. So let me just finish then. Um, we need to do further work at correlating uh, LIF levels in, in human serum and tumor samples. Uh, with uh, prognosis and overall survival. If those results are positive, then we can try and develop LIF as a potential biomarker to monitor tumor progression and therapy response. And I think given the relatively strong evidence that LIF can serve as a pancreatic cancer driver, the next step will be to develop a humanized anti-LIF monoclonal antibody for clinical trials in combination with standard of care 
Uh, and Northern Biologics, a, a small biotech company in Toronto, has in fact developed such an antibody, and it is going to go into clinical trials later this year. And we're trying to persuade them they should be looking at pancreatic cancer patients. So let me just stop and thank the, uh, the people who did the work. Um, it was really spearheaded by Yu Shi, a postdoc in my lab. Uh, the mass spec was done by Rujan Tian. We've had help from Nikki and Tanishta, Tim Donahue, uh, Kathy Del Giorno, uh, postdoc in Jeff Wall's lab, Michael Downs and, and Ron Evans. And here's, here's our funding. Thank you very much. Jeff? Oh, it's Jeff. <laughs> very nice, Tony, of course. Um, but I was curious, in the, um, I can understand why um, all the mice might die in the LIF-treated samples. There are many reasons to imagine that. But in the genetic model where you deleted the LIF receptor, uh, I guess there are two potential reasons, right? One is that not all the cells have the deletion. And the second is that there's a mechanism of overcoming the absence of that receptor. Do you know which one of those it is, or is it both? We think it's because the deletion was incomplete. Okay. We've done some um, RNA scope analysis. Look, so you delete um, a single exon. So you have to do the analysis for that single exon. We see that there is significant levels of residual exon. So we think that's the mechanism. But you're right. It could be a, an independent sort of resistance pathway that develops, yes. So, Tony, I think, oh, sorry. Oh. That was very nicely done. So, Thanks. I had a question. Who am I interrupting? Sorry. Uh, anyway, with the LIF, um, did you say it signals through phosphostat 3? It does. We have, it does signal through phosphostat 3, and mm. we have not um, seen much evidence that it's activating um, the ERK and PI3 kinase pathway in the tumor cells. So we think it's probably primarily through STAT3, but we certainly wouldn't rule out um, another, another pathway downstream. In uh, um, embryonic stem cells, um, IL-6 can also drive self-renewal. We think that it could in, work through STAT3 as well in this system, but um, there appears to be very little receptor in the, in the tumor I'm just thinking if there's a phosphorus STAT3, there are various JAK2 inhibitors that inhibit STAT3, but also Ionis Pharmaceuticals says an antisense to phosphorus STAT3. So it just may be another approach if you find the, the Canadian company that could may not be able Right. To. So as you may know, I mean, uh, Ruxinolib or whatever yes, that's Rux. that's what we call it for inhibitor sure. is called was uh, put into a, pa a pancreatic cancer clinical trial and was not very successful. Um, as as um, obviously you know, um, you know, JAK2 inhibitors also affect the immune system and a number of others, so it's not quite as targeted to the tumor cells as one might like. But it's obviously worth considering further attempts, yes. Uh, what's the phenotype of a LIF knockout? Yeah, I, just, I skipped over that. There's no phenotype of LIF knockout mice which is sort of surprising, um, except they are the, 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 the males are sterile. So there is, a, there is a, a phenotype, but it's not a serious phenotype. So if that's true in humans, then that would suggest that neutralizing LIF, particularly in an adult, might not be as, give you any serious side effects. But obviously, that would have to be tried. So the, obviously, the phase one of this neutralizing antibody will be for toxicity and uh, safety. If you were to do uh, gene dosage overexpression of LIF in, in mice, what happens? We have not done that. I'm not sure anyone has specifically driven LIF. It will be an interesting um, thing to do. The question is which cell type, um, potentially in the stellate cells, I suppose, and to see whether that increased the onset progression of pancreatic cancers, yes. Was it hard to make an antibody to mouse lift? Ah, so I didn't tell you. I also skipped over that for the sake of time. So it turns out this antibody was made by Genentech back in the early 1990s uh, for a cardiovascular indication. Um, they abandoned that project, and very nicely of them, they deposited all of their lift neutralizing antibodies into uh, ATCC. But uh, it's apparently not so difficult because Northern Biologics or their precursor company, Mosaic, actually made uh, their own neutralizing 
uh, lift antibody. That's a rat monoclonal. So I don't think it's that hard. There is a helix right at the end of the lift cytokine, which seems to be a good target for monoclonal antibodies. Thank you.